when you receive tax form 1099C, it means a creditor forgave or discharged at least $600 of your debt. This could be from a credit company, bank, mortgage company, or other lender. You will need to report it on your tax return for the year the debt was cancelled. Note, even if the amount of discharge is less than $600, you are required to report it. Generally, the amount shown on the form is considered taxable income by the IRS because the debtor receives a benefit without paying for it. However, there are few exceptions. Debt discharge in Title 11 bankruptcy, including Chapter 7 and 13, cancel debt on qualified farms and real business property, forgiven debt on qualified principal residents during specific periods, debt canceled due to insolvency, and additionally, certain students' loan discharges after December 31, 2020 and before January 1, 2026 are also not taxable, should not be even issued on Tax Form 1099-C. To report exceptions, you would add the 1099-C to your tax return and attach Tax Form 982 claiming an exception. Let's briefly go over each of the information listed on the tax form. You should receive Form 1099-C by January 31st, the year after the debt was canceled or forgiven. If you receive the form after you filed your taxes, you should file an amended tax return, even if it doesn't change your tax bill. The creditor is the entity canceling your debt. In box 1, you will see the date when the debt was canceled. Box 2 reports the amount canceled on your debt. The amount of interest that was forgiven is reported in box 3. Box 4 provides a description of the debt being discharged. If you are personally liable for a repayment of the debt, you will see box 5 check. In box 6, you will see a code showing reason for the Form 1099-C, such as bankruptcy, foreclosure, etc. If you abandon property or you was subject of foreclosure in connection with cancellation of the debt, the fair market value of the property will be shown in box 7, or you will receive a separate Form 1099-A. This box is out of scope for this video. If you receive a Form 1099-C showing any incorrect information, you should contact the creditor to make corrections. Based on the latest IRS source of income statistics, for tax year 2020, there were over half a million tax returns filing tax form 1099-C which amounted to almost $5 billion of additional income. Almost 100,000 of filers claimed some type of exceptions in 2020, which amounted to over $2.7 billion. Majority of that had to do with real business or primary residence property basis reduction. We will go over the most frequently experienced type of debt on 1099-C, cancellation of credit card debt. If the taxpayer receives Form 1099-C for cancelled credit card debt and was solvent, meaning assets were greater than liabilities, immediately before the debt was cancelled, all the cancelled debt will be included on the tax return as other income on Schedule 1. How do you determine whether someone is solvent or not? IRS has an insolvency worksheet in IRS Publication 4681 that you can use to help you determine whether you were solvent or not at the time of the debt cancellation. So if your credit card debt was canceled on November 15, 2023, you would need to determine whether you were solvent right before and as close as possible to the date. I have created a Google Sheets file of the insolvency worksheet that you can use. Let's go to an example. James made a deal with his credit card company to pay $2,000 on his $7,000 MasterCard credit card balance, and the company agreed to take it as a payment in full. In January of 2024, he received a Form 1099-C from his credit card company reporting $5,000 in box 2. Before the cancellation of debt is considered income, James would have to see whether he was solvent immediately before the debt was cancelled. He has to check 
what were his assets and liabilities, not in January 2024 when he received the form, but when the debt was canceled, which was November 15, 2023. I have a simplified version of the IRS worksheet here. Let's put in some numbers for the assets and liabilities. In our case, James had 65,300 more in assets than liabilities in November of 2023. Therefore, he is considered solvent and thus his cancellation of the 5,000 MasterCard debt that he received under 1099C is taxable and needs to be included in income. Let's see how this would be entered on a tax return. I'm using TaxLayer for this example, but you can use any other software. You would have to find under income or search for tax form 1099C in the software, then enter all the information listed on the form. Initially, when I ran the return, James would receive a small $139 refund, but after we added the additional $5,000 in income on which he didn't have any withholdings, he would now owe to the federal government $561. The additional income is listed on Schedule 1, Part 1, and flows through to 1040. Now, what happens when the situation would be the same, but James is considered insolvent? Meaning the fair market value of all the assets is less than the liabilities. The amount or level of insolvency is expressed as a negative net worth. If that was the case, James would need to use the IRS insolvency worksheet that you have a copy of now to perform the calculations and attach tax form 982 to his tax return claiming insolvency exception. So in our case, you would add the 1099C in the tax software, then search for tax form 982 or reduction of tax attributes, which is the tax form name. Once I do that, I can see that I have to enter all the assets and liabilities that James would need to enter on the IRS insolvency worksheet. Per our calculations, James had 21,700 more in debts than his assets. And that is exactly what shows up here. Now, when I finalize the tax return, I can see that the 5,000 that MasterCard canceled for James is no longer listed under additional income. And the tax form 982 with the IRS insolvency calculation is attached. If you can exclude the cancellation of debt, you would need to attach this to your tax return and keep for your records how you estimated all these numbers immediately before the debt was canceled. The burden is on the taxpayer. We won't cover the more complicated situations like when insolvency is less than the forgiven debt, etc. For such personalized advice, consult a local advisor. Thanks so much for watching.